Nobody wants to admit that they don't like their child. I mean, it's your kid, you love them. And I did love Graham, but he was, um, he was hard. He was very, very hard. We met at church doing uh, some ministry together. We were a little bit older when we got married, so we talked about having children quickly. They were gonna become Christians uh, at a very early age because we were gonna have them in church and pray with them all the time. And I think 10 months after we were married, we had Graham. We took him home, he was healthy, he looked just like me. We didn't really have a comparison, so we didn't know exactly at the moment um, that, that things were different. It wasn't that he was bad. He was just very, very, very active. He was moving around all the time, disrupting class, getting in trouble. I noticed too that he would not really play with the other kids. He didn't have friends. They would make fun of him. Just, uh, it was like he was haunted. We took him to the doctor and uh, he was diagnosed with ADHD. That may be true, but there's something social that we're missing. He wasn't disciplined, he wouldn't uh, listen. Okay, Graham needs a time out or something. Here was this little person not doing anything that we said. We disciplined out of anger on several occasions. Graham, you need to get it and get out. It was scary, you know, sometimes to think, what are we doing, you know? We had a plan, but we felt very much out of control. We're spanking all the time, we're disciplined all the time, we're supposed to be having fun, we're supposed to have great relationships with our kids, and it's not turning out at all like we thought it was supposed to. Okay, let's get this in my finger. At 10 years old, he was diagnosed with Asperger syndrome. But instead of like a, a terrible news, it was kind of a relief. It was like, finally, I knew there was something else. When he was probably about 12, his behavior, it just was so overwhelming. I remember just going in my bedroom and being so exasperated. I just fell down on my bed and I just began sobbing and I cried out to God and I said, God, I'm tired of asking you to help me because I can't do it. You need to do it. It was pretty amazing because I heard him say in my spirit, Graham is gonna get it. And I sat up and I looked around the room and I said, what? <laughs> and God said to me again, Graham is gonna get it. And I said, okay, then I trust you that Graham's gonna get it. And he didn't tell me what to do, he just gave me hope. I'm glad God <laughs> gave me that at that point because it was pretty much downhill after that. <laughs> Around 13, Graham began using marijuana. He began the ritual of cutting himself to relieve anxiety. He would start fires in our house and we wouldn't know it. And then it was at that point that he and his dad got in a fight. We were fighting each other basically. And, you know, I partly think it's my fault, but he ran out and he got a, a rock and he threw it and he hit me in the head. And I said, call 911. The police said, that's enough. And we know you're gonna let him come back, but we're not. And so they actually put a restraining order on him and he went to jail. I wanna have a friendship with him. As a dad, you know, I'm, I'm the guy that's uh, over the family. And that's what God anticipated it to be. But I still need to be friends and love. Shortly thereafter, he had some kind of emotional breakdown. He broke into a home and he got in trouble with a very strict county in Texas. For two years, they had him bouncing back and forth from the mental hospital to jail and back and forth. He did try to commit suicide several times. He cut himself several times. I can remember one time that he was bleeding out of consciousness because he cut his neck in several places. Every night I would wake up and I found myself just talking to God and telling him all the things I was scared about. They were not trusting prayers. They, they turned into uh, worry sessions. I wanted Graham 
to have peace and have joy. And then I thought, well, peace and joy is Jesus. That's a person. So I began to just pray, God, please let Graham experience you. That's really what he needs. He doesn't need mama to come and rescue him or daddy to come and um, flip a bill and, and get him out of a jam. Uh, if he's in a jam, you are his rescuer and he has to experience you and I have to let him go to do that. But when he finally did get out, he decided that he was going to go to Colorado. Marijuana was going to be his answer that was going to give him peace. And he got a bus ticket. He went to Colorado. Colorado wasn't everything he thought. So he ended up hitchhiking to Portland, Oregon. Hit the bottom there, too. Didn't have anybody that he knew. We we're actually on a vacation in Mexico during this time. And uh, Graham called us just half crazed. He was crying and screaming and, and mad because he had ran out of all of his medications and he was at a hospital and they wouldn't give him any more medications. I said, Graham, we can wire you some money, but there, there's nothing else we can do. He got upset. He hung up on me. And right before he hung up on me, he said, I'm going to hurt somebody. I couldn't jump on a plane. I couldn't call him. He lost his phone. He called me from the hospital. There was nothing. This feels very bad. It feels like, it feels like the end. And so all we could do was pray. And instead of having my worry sessions in my prayer, um, I just, I cut it short. And, and I just told God, uh, he is so yours and he's always been yours. I want so badly to go rescue him, but I know you brought me here. I believe you brought me here for a reason and you took me out of the way and I need to trust that. So please help me just to let it go and to let you do your thing with him. And amazingly, I closed my eyes and I fell asleep. I actually took a nap. I mean like right away and I don't nap, <laughs> never nap. God just flooded me with peace right in the middle of the hugest storm. We were in Cabo for two weeks. We came home and I brought my mind back to my son. However we can do it, we have to get plane tickets and go to Portland. And it may be that we find him in a morgue. We had just to trust God, period. Come on, get it. So two and a half weeks later, I got a call from California. I answered it, and I heard Graham. He called me and he said, Mom, I lost everything. Someone stole my backpack, and I was just on the street, and I couldn't call you. I didn't have any money. I didn't have my ID. I didn't have anything. He said, I knew I didn't know anybody for thousands of miles but I knew God. I was in Sacramento. I had just hopped a freight train down with a bunch of people from Portland. And I had this like vision. Some of it might have been a dream, but I saw like hell. And it wasn't just this place where people were eternally Tortured. It was this place where people chose to do things their own way and to live without God because they didn't want to be with their Creator, so they didn't get to live with Him ever. And everyone there wanted a relationship with this Creator now. The next day, I was so filled with compassion and love for other people that the people I was hanging out with couldn't stand to be around me. They actually kicked me out of their group because of the transformation that had happened overnight that night. Graham had experienced God. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. At this time, I was still using uh, medical marijuana to treat my anxiety, bipolar disorder, 
I remember very clearly God showed me what my life would look like if he did heal me and what it would look like if he didn't. And the difference was extreme. And uh, he gave me a choice. He also made that choice very easy. Amazing transformation since then. Graham is off of all his medication. He's off of all drugs. He's walking with the Lord. What we've prayed at his youth has come to pass in his older age. Who died on the cross for you? And that's who God's son is, isn't it? Jesus is the only source of peace that I have found. What I used to trust God for was an outcome, was what I was praying for, that I trust that that would happen. And now it's not about the outcome, but it's about trusting God for trusting God. He knew how far to go with Graham. He knew when and how and where Graham was going to respond, and he did it. And I'm very, very grateful.